Hello everyone, happy Wednesday, and welcome to another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. On the show, I tend to talk more about science than actual history, even though I tout this as a history sh and science show. Well, today, let's change things up, and since we are in the middle of the Olympics, I thought it would be fun to go over the history and the origins of the Olympics. Why do we hold it? And does it still serve a purpose? Well, going forward, I will be talking about two types of Olympics. One, the ancient Olympics, and two, the modern-day Olympics, because they are both entirely different from one another. So without further ado, let's hop right into it, and let's hop right back in time. Historians don't know for sure when the game started, but because of an account by the Greek philosopher Aristotle about the first games, we have a date, 776 BC, close to 3,000 years ago. Around the Mediterranean, cultures like the Greeks, Mesopotamians, and ancient Egyptians had traditions going back hundreds, even thousands of years, using athletic games to honor the gods. The poet Homer had many of his heroes go through various sports as well, that we still see today in the modern-day Olympics, minus the chariot racings, and they were all for the honor of the dead. The ancient games served many purposes. The games originally served as a way to honor the god Zeus, but over time, it even became a way to measure time, entertainment, and most notably as a show of military strength. Now what about that time part of the game I mentioned? In ancient Greece, because of the size of the region in the Mediterranean, a lot of politicians, historians, and poets could not agree on the actual date when something like, let's say, a solar eclipse happened. So they started using the Olympiad, or the four-year period between each games, as a use of measurement for the calendar. During the first 200 years of the games, only Greeks that lived within the vicinity of the Olympic venue, which was known as the Sanctuary of Olympia, participated, but because of that many different cities and factions fought for control over the sanctuary, and whoever gained control of it took part in the games the next time. However, in 146 BC, the Greeks fell to the Roman Empire, and with one central ruler, there was no need for fighting amongst regions, factions, and cities. The state of the games was uncertain for the next 134 years, as the Roman conquest started to take advantage of the games, most notably the Roman general Sulla in 86 BC took all the winnings of the Olympia to finance his war against the Persians in that same year. Everything, however, changed under the rule of the Emperor Augustus, who in 12 BC restored the temple to Zeus and the sanctuary of the Olympia that had been destroyed in the Roman invasion, and turning the games into a spectacle where various athletes could compete from regions and cities throughout the Roman Empire and the Mediterranean for glory and prestige. It was the golden age of the ancient Olympics, but like all good things, it had to come to an end. The next emperor Nero, during the games of 67 BC, turned the games into a rigged spectacle where the emperor himself participated, and even when he lost, if you didn't crown him the victor, you could face execution. His reign did not last long, for he was assassinated a year later, and all Olympic judges declared that the Nero Olympics to be void and that it didn't count. Thankfully, the next three emperors were full supporters of the games, and it saw another golden era, and the games lasted till the 3rd century AD. But even though it fell out of favor, some people in small cities and regions still celebrated to honor Zeus, even though it was not a spectacle anymore. The last recorded official games of the ancient Olympics was held in 393 AD. Now before you get back into your regularly scheduled content, if you're enjoying my content, and if you're listening on YouTube, I'd really appreciate if you give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. And do not forget to hit that little bell icon so you can be notified whenever I post something new. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify or the audio platform of your choice, consider following. 
Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Now let's get back into the rest of the episode. Now what about the modern day Olympics? The need to bring back the Olympics came from a sense of pride after the Greece won the War of Independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1821, which held control of the entire country for nearly 400 years. And in 1833, a wealthy philanthropist by the name of Evangelos Zappos approached the new leader of Greece and offered to sponsor a revival of the Olympic Games even restoring the Pantheonic Stadium where the games were held so long ago. And in 1870, the first Olympic Games in 1500 years was held. It was such a success that they held one five years later as well. And after observing the games in 1875, a man by the name of Pierre de Cobontin was inspired by the event that in 1890, he founded the now famous International Olympic Committee, and six years later, the first modern day Olympics was held, the Summer 1896 Games in Athens. And for the first time in Olympic history, it was not just the athletes from Greece, Rome, or the Mediterranean regions. 241 athletes from 14 nations around the world participated, those nations being Australia, Austria, Bulgaria, Chile, Denmark, France, Germany, Great Britain, Greece of course, Hungary, Italy, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United States. The history of the modern day Olympics is long and complicated, so I won't go through it all. But now as we watch the 32nd Summer Olympics and the 24th Winter Olympics Games is on the horizon, over the span of 200 years, the games have gone from 11 countries to 200, from 43 events to 339 events, and finally, from 241 athletes to an astounding 12,000 athletes from around the world. In that 200-year period, the modern-day Olympics will go through many changes, such as terrorism at the games, to war dividing the games, to even two world wars canceling a few games to the inclusion of women and minorities in the games. The ancient games to celebrate the god Zeus has transformed to an event celebrating the greatest feats mankind has to offer and the coming together of every nation on the planet, no matter your race, creed, or religion. I hope you all enjoyed this fun departure. Researching this was so fun. Let me know if I should do more like this. Well. That is all I got for today. Before I go, I would like to thank you again for joining me for another episode. And I would also love to ask for all your help in letting me know how I'm doing and how I can improve this show. After all, this is your show and I do it all for you. So head over to my social media or if you're watching on YouTube, just go down to the comments below and let me know what you think. Thanks so much and do not forget to share this to anyone in your life could use a scientific moment in theirs. I hope you will join me again tomorrow for another episode of Quandries and Sundries. This is Van Masterson, signing off till tomorrow.